Yo, yo, what is up? Can y'all hear me? Can't see too many folks. Check this. What's good, YouTube? I am about to attempt. This is my first live um, as far as me being in my element and working in the studio. And I have a lot of text messages coming in because it's my first time doing this um, on my MacBook, my studio. But welcome to my studio. I got a beat pulled up um, and I'm about to get ready to mix this beat. And I'm show you guys my process of how I mix a beat. Um, there's nothing really set in stone when it comes to mixing a beat. Um, you have your certain workflow and it works for you and you mix and come up with a great, great, great mix. Um, you did your job. There's no set in stone um, way to do it. You know, you just got to go in there. And the goal that you're trying to accomplish is make a record sounds great. Whether it's a track or a song or whatever, you, um, that's the goal is to make it sound great. So the first thing I usually do it's already got that, that part done. Um, I imported all the, uh, this is basically a beat that I made about maybe three weeks ago, and I'm finally getting around to actually mixing it. So the first thing I do when I'm mixing a beat is I import the session from Logic, which basically is just the audio files, because I bounce the audio files out of Logic so I can bring them into Pro Tools. And the reason I do that is that I am, sorry about that guys, I am sufficient at Pro Tools. Um, I have a certification in Pro Tools, um, and I have a certification in Logic, and Ontario's and all this software and TC Electronics. I do prefer to make a beat in Pro Tools. Well, I do prefer to make a beat in Logic, but I bounce it out of Logic and mix in Pro Tools because I do all my vocals and I mix my records. I even master in Pro Tools, so it's only natural for me to um, mix the beat in Pro Tools. So what we have here is the Pro Tools session. I already got it pulled up. The sample rates match. Everything match. Um, I imported it, and what I do next is I color code. Um, I know you guys can't really see, but let me pull it up real quick. I hope the frame rate matches. Um, well, you can't really see it. Um, I wish you, they had that little. You know how you can adjust the um, how you can adjust the um, the focus on the screen like you do with your iPhone. We you have the camera. I wish you could do that with this MacBook, but. Um, I probably do my um, probably do it on my iPad next. Um, let's go around, but yeah, this is a better shot, better imaging. But yeah, I color code the tracks, and let's just go ahead and run it. This is how the track sounds first. <laughs> And that's pretty much the track. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and um, just mix it. Mix it and make it sound good. Just in case I want to drop some vocals because I am a singer and I'm a, um, a vocal producer as well. But just in case I want to drop some um, some vocals on it, I'm going to mix it to how it would probably sound. Well, closer to how it sound when it get done, when I get done mastering it. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get to it. So what I do is I organize my drums. Let me make sure I got my volume up. I organize my drums first. Um, my drums I always go up top. That's just how I am because I'm a percussionist as well. So let me go ahead and take these drums up top. And next time we're gonna do some, we're gonna do some screen so you guys can see the screen. Next time what we're gonna do is we're gonna have some close-up shots and have some screen captures so you guys can see the screen. But I'm gonna explain as much as I possibly can to you guys. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm organizing my drums, and I'm taking my drums up top. As I stated, kick's always the first one that I get to, because the kick is important, especially in today's market, in today's music, the kick is extremely important, because um, it kind of drives the record, and everybody like hear that kick, and hear that snare pop, especially hip-hop, and um, the modern R&B, kind of the R&B kind of movement that's going on right now. So let's go ahead and do that. 
And no, 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 no. Where's my snare? And I color coded as I move along to, let's see the hi hats up top. The piano goes down below, vocals, open hat, um, pad intro. We got the snare right there. So this is it, the triple hat, because I did a separate hat. Uh, pad intro, and oh, you set the tempo too. You have to set your tempo first. I don't know what the hell I'm doing today. I'm just out of character. I had a great meeting with um, one of my Grammy voting members today, and it was just awesome. If you guys heard my previous um, my previous um, live that I was just doing a little quick test. Um, so, yeah. Tempo. And this tempo is 116. And man, shout out to all of y'all that support my videos and always checking out my uh, my videos that's coming out, my studio tours and all of that, and my uh, when I'm giving you guys advice on equipment, what equipment to buy, because you don't need, I'm a hoarder, instrument hoarder, so you don't need all this stuff. But it's always good to have. Yep, there we go. So we got it set to the 16. And okay. So let me go ahead and put these in bars of eight. Eight is the magic number when it comes to this stuff. And I have the weirdest workflow. I have two mouses or mices, however you want to put it. Um, this magic mouse, I use it and I bounce back and forth using them. And also I have a pre um the pre um, um the controller, the little pre this fader port. I have that as well, but I use these nice mouse simultaneously. I jump, jump back and forth. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And um, for you guys, if you heard my song, I Ride For You, last year that was on radio, I was playing my song, um, Ride For You. I produced it and um, sung the vocals, a hook on it. Um, with Shorty the Prince from 106 and Park. Um, and JR, they has a song with Trey Song called Best Friend, but I produced the record, I sing it a hook, and um, it's DJ Cuddy's song, but of course, I'm DJ Cuddy's partner. Um, and the song really went big. It was on 15 radio stations um, around the country, and we were number one on three of the stations. I did all of that in this studio. The song that was that was spinning in rotation of about eight months ago, I did all of that here. Did the vocals on my U87 and my Apollo, produced the track and Logic, and Nothing special about it, but you can do things from home. You don't have to be in a million dollar studio or anything like that. You can, hell, I've seen, when I was on the road with Jibs, Black, the Black Eyed Peas recorded an album on an inbox. Now, how about that? Yeah. So let's go ahead, clean this up. I'm cleaning up the track just so I can start the process of mixing. But this is pretty much how I do it. Let me get my stuff running. And we're gonna do auxiliaries and effects a little later. So let's see, right here. So the kick. Now, what I do with the kick, the kick, what I do with the kick is I drop a compressor on there, not to turn it up loud, but I'll put a compressor on it. I just put a regular BX compressor on it, especially during the mixing process. Um, basically, a BF, not BX, but basically the BF76, just to kind of keep it in place. I'm um, just a basic compressor. And my sound, I always push, use a regular EQ for the kick um, in hip hop music and R&B. I always drop it anything below 60, um, and I crank the kick, and I narrow the cue at 100K. <laughs> well, at, yeah, at, no, 100 hertz. I narrow the cue at 100 hertz, so I give it a little bump right at 100, and it gives it a nice little punch, and the subwoofer, I basically mix that next, and you're going to see how it's going to complement it. Hold on. Then we try to take some of the, the highs out as well. 
But the only thing I give some shine with the kick is a narrow cue on the um, on the one hundred on the one hundred hertz. But watch how it um, the um, subwoofer accents it. So this is what we got. That's a subwoofer. Now, what I do with the 808, so what I do with the 808 is I put the exact same compressor on it. And this is what I do for my radio mixes. The songs out here that I do in radio, <laughs> this is what I do. Um, there we go. And watch those levels. When you're doing your mixes, make sure you're not... I always put it at negative six, and when I'm doing the mastering process, I push it up to zero, and we go a little over zero, because I'm not a part of the loudness board. I was just sitting down with my uh, mastering engineer, Martina, um, um, and we've had coffee this morning. She was telling me she's tired of this loudness war, and I'm like, I am too. I don't participate in it. So, yeah, so there we go. So what we got to do here... Okay, now the sub book, the sub 808, as you can hear, I'll put that 50 back in there. I EQ that 50. And for this sound, I'm not gonna have the highs in. I'm just gonna leave just the actual presence of the sub, just put it, kind of keep it under there. So, um, and I may come back and add some distortion. Now let's go ahead and get a snap some kit. See? It's, now the snap's a special part. We do a compressor on that, but today I'm going to go for... Let me do an 1176. And of course, you know Pro Tools. <laughs> it just wouldn't let me. Yeah, we're going to put a black face... Um, a blackface 1176 from Universal Audio. We're going to put a blackface on 1176 on the snare. Weird, but we're going to do it. Trust me. It's, it's going to sound good. I just feel like it's going to sound good today. So let's go ahead. Let me take this out. There we go. Let's see how it pops out. Oh, nice. So I have all buttons in to give it a pump. Um, see my ratio. We're gonna put the ratio, um, the attack on three. And let's release it at five. Let's release it at five. Just for shits and giggles today. Now, here's a trick guys. When you're EQing your snare, um, 300 to 500 hertz, give it this nice kind of like, presence like thick beef to it so if you have a snare you're mixing the snare try the 300 to 500 hertz just give it a little bump and see what it takes you and give it some clarity about it 10k and see what that takes you can you guys tell that i'm a freaking can you tell i'm an engineer first not really i'm a musician first <laughs> I went to engineering school so I could record myself because I got tired of people. Okay, so let's EQ this about nothing special today. Let me take some of the lows out. See, listen, it's 300. See that? That pop. That. See, that's what we want right there. Right there. And since it is a hybrid of a snare, well, it's, a, it's a hybrid of a hi hat, an open hat in there. We're going to, let's see. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. So also, I gave it a, let me take some more mids out of it just to kind of give it a little crisp to it. I took 4.5K out, and I gave it a boost at about 5K. Fair enough. There we go. Now that's how it sounds with the kid. Adjust that volume a little bit with my fader port.
See how it's yeah. There we go. Okay. I really want some triplets going now with the hi hat. It's pretty much self-explanatory. Um, self-explanatory. We're gonna just kind of give it a little tin on top, just so it can have a little clarity in the beat. We're just gonna put a little tin on. And I use seven bad EQs on everything with the exception of the hi-hat. I use a one band. Uh, uh, yeah, that snap is hidden. I like that. What y'all think? I can't see. I have to implement the um, I will respond to you guys after I get out of the room. I can't, um, I can't really see you guys because I'm just trying this out. I'm in Google Hangout just trying to see how it works. And, um, and I'll be able to be a little more communi communicate with you guys a little more um, next time. So. Ten K. Ten K. Open hat. Let's do the same thing for it, the open hat. I'm a panic though. I'm gonna stick it over this way. Okay, now let's add the triplet hat. This was a little more deeper, the triple hat, the triplet. Now what we're gonna do for this one, we're gonna take it over this way, this triplet hat. So I basically have three hats, an open hat, a regular hat, with some triplets going on, and some a serious deep triple hat. And comment below if you guys want to see me make this beat, because I do have a video in the slot in case y'all want to see how this beat is made. Okay, so let me color code my drawings. Now we got our amazing drawings. Let me give them a dark hue or a dark color. Let's do the triple hat. Let's go for this. Okay, so let me show you guys how my session looks. If I can get it to, to show. This is basically how the session is. Hold on. I used to be somebody I could trust. Come on. Why am I touching the screen like an idiot? <laughs> it's not going to work, y'all. So, yeah. Um, yeah, this is the way I do it. I'm, I'm me. I'm not trying to um, do it like anybody else. This is the way I do it. Um, and this is how I want you guys to experience me, just like you're being in my studio with me. So, yeah, let's go ahead and color code these. Um, Let's make them fuchsia. <laughs> okay, so let me start on the instruments. Let's start on the instruments for. Hey. So these are the two instruments I have going during the chorus. And one good thing about um, Logic is, for the most part, my chords, any type of chords I play, or any type of instruments that I'm actually, like leads and synthesizers, I actually have them sounding the way I want them to sound already. So I don't have to do much in the mix other than a little EQing and a little spacing, adding some reverb here and there. But the tone, everything is pretty much exactly how I want it. It never takes me long because while I'm producing, I make sure my instruments sound exactly how I want them to sound. Um, before I even get to mixing it, which is I like to record vocals like that too. When I'm recording vocals for an artist or myself, I make sure that the vocal sound is close to the song after how I want it to sound when it's completed as possible. I don't like to do a lot of vocal processing because it takes away from the organicness of the artist and it takes away from the organicness of um, just the, the record period. And when I say record, I'm talking about song. I don't, songs are so low arcy when it comes to 
when I'm when I'm talking about how a, a record checks out, a record you feel a record. A record is like um, Michael Jackson songs. They're records. They're really they're the hierarchy of them is just dope as fuck, you know. So yeah, let me go ahead and um, and the piano. I'm gonna add a little more reverb, and I may put an SSL on it. Uh, yeah, let's try an SSL. Let's put an SSL and kind of do a piano EQ. Let's go with an E series SSL, which is the Solid State Logic console. Uh, thank you guys for coming by to check me out. I, I appreciate that. You guys are fucking awesome. And yes, I drink water out of a beer mug. And I drink beer out of a beer mug. You guys be sure to check out my studio tour too, if you guys want to know what anything is in here. And I'm also going to do a studio furniture um, tour where you guys know what I got my chair from and what my desk is. It's a studio train. I'm going to do that this week as well. And I'm doing a q and I'm asking the Q&A later on this week. You guys, well, next week, by next Friday, you guys will have that video up. So, let's see. Let's go for a... I said an E-series, scratch that. Let's just do the, um, yeah, let's do the just the standard wave one. Um, and let me kind of, I have a piano, I have a piano template and preset already for my sound. Um, Let's see how it sounds. Little too high, teeny. Let me let me turn down the highs a little bit. Perfect, 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 perfect. And that presence is there. That SSL, man, I can't wait to have one of those consoles in my house, man. Whoa. Let's go to the 70s. Let me put a, um, let me put a, a 1176 on the synthesizer just to see, and let's put a blue face on it. Let's put a, um, yeah, let's drop a blue face on that one. Yeah. A black body blue face. Now let's hear the intro. That's good enough. So let's see the bell. We got a padded bell, a little over here. Now the vocals. Let's uh, let's focus on these vocals. The vocals um, is a, a vocal engine called XL. It's by Output. Dope shit. I use it in everything. Now it's just crazy. So watch it. It's perfect. It's perfect. Let's do a stereo spread on it, um, just to give it some ambience. And we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it effects. Um, I'm gonna just set up some options with um, reverb and some delays, and just play around with the track a little bit and see what we can come up with. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a stereo spread for this. Like I do it. I do effects last. I do the effects last. So let's see. Just use a regular um, 
Avid Air Design Stubborn Spray. <laughs> Now be careful with your stereo spray because it will make it sound louder, but it's not. Uh, just give it a space in the mix. That's all mixing is, is making space for each instrument. That's it. It's not turning some turning things up really loud or um, or just um, basically turning the song, but it is turning it to go. But mixing is just making space for each indiv individual instrument to have a part of the great record that you are creating. That's what mixing is. That's the only thing it is. And you can do volumes and EQs and compression and all of that. But the essence of mixing is making space and giving each instrument a designated home. That's all it is. So. That's perfect. The spray is perfect. like classical chords being played in any like trap record and it's making sense and people actually like it but yeah guys this is pretty much the gist of it this is just of the mix and um it's not gonna get um it's gonna get a little better than that but um that's pretty much sums it up and that's how i start my mixing process and that's how i basically finish it i'm gonna do a few more effects on it and um and i have a record up but make sure you guys comment if y'all like this beat and y'all want to see me make it because i already recorded a video to me making it if you guys like it and you want me to put it out, I will definitely put it out um, next week. And um, it's going to have all the cool effects and all the flying stuff and um, giving you guys detail on each plug and I use um, when I post it. So, yeah, man, I really do appreciate you guys. You guys you guys are freaking dope. Uh, make sure you go check out my studio um, tour um, 2017, which I posted a few months back. Um, and check out the new, newer videos that I've done. You guys are awesome. Um, this is Archie Beats, and I'm signing off.